Hey guys, hi, how are you? Almost two years ago, we bought our Tesla Model Y Performance and we drove it for 26,000 miles. Today, I bring you our closing video regarding our Tesla Model Y Performance ownership experience and why we sold it. Also, I wanna give you a full breakdown of our cost of ownership. Right before signing the paperwork, I was debating whether I should lease or buy a Tesla Model Y, and I decided to buy it just to have the option of doing what, I'm, what I just did, which is getting rid of it after less than two years. So I knew that I wasn't keeping it forever, and I just didn't know, I just didn't know how long I would be keeping it. When we ordered a Tesla Model Y, this is what I thought. I buy it, I install a home charger, and I live a life of convenience where I only charge it when I go on long trips. Uh, 300 miles of range should take me a long way. We do a lot of weekend traveling and our usual round trip is about 300 miles. We live in San Diego, so we go to LA and stuff like that. So it was a perfect car for us on paper. There's one main reason and there's other reasons that play a lesser role in your decision of letting go of it. In this video, I'll tell you what I like, disliked, and hated about a Tesla Model Y performance. But first, I don't want to drag you along for too long, so I'll tell you straight up the main reason why we got rid of this car in case you don't want to watch the whole video. It just wasn't the right car for us, plain and simple. It took us, what, 21 months to realize it? It wasn't mainly because we don't have a home charger and because we do too many weekend trips and charging is annoying and inconvenient. That is the main reason, and in this video, I'll go over the rest of my impressions in case you're thinking about getting a Tesla Model Y or any other EV and you don't have the option of installing a home charger. I think that my testimony is valuable because I did most things that a person can do with the Model Y. I drove it in many different scenarios, uh, the heavy rains of the south, the high temperatures of the California desert. I took it to Mexico. I took it across the United States. I off-roaded it and I put a lot of freeway miles on it. I also did 95% of charging in the Tesla supercharger network. So for those of you that are afraid of shortening the life of the battery by fast charging it uh, in excess, I have great news. The battery degradation was less than 5%. I honestly think that the Tesla Model Y is the mid-sized electric SUV to beat. Um, in our time with it, we took the Model Y on road trips to Las Vegas, Santa Barbara twice, El Paso, Texas twice, and Florida. In the last nine months alone, we put over 16,000 miles on it, mostly freeway miles. So as you can see, we put our Model Y to work. It was in a garage queen, and in this multiple trips, the EV was always out of its element. And today, I bring you this video to give you an idea of what it's like to live with a Tesla Model Y as a daily driver without the convenience of a home charger. Let's talk about the cost of ownership of our Tesla Model Y after 26,000 miles. Our MYP had a price tag of $63,290 plus $710 of fees. So let's round it up to $64,000. And I wanna be as fair as possible in this computation, so I won't include sales tax or interest. I sold it for $46,000. So during my ownership, the Model Y lost $18,000 or 28% of its value. I sold it to CarMax, so obviously, I would have gotten a lot more money if I would have sold a private party. And I saw some comparables for sale as for private party for around 50 to $55,000, but I don't know how long the people were sitting on these vehicles. There were other expenses associated with the Model Y. Let me explain. Because I live in California, we bought it here. So in sales tax, we paid $4,900 and I got an excellent APR at 25 2.49%. So in interest, I paid about $2,000. I also paid five months of FSD subscription for a total of over $1,000. So in total, I paid almost $26,000. To that, uh, deduct the state rebate of $2,000 that I got. So the final cost of ownership was about $24,000. And those of you that follow my channel should already know that I had thousands of free referral miles. So I only paid about $200 of charging fees right at the beginning of my ownership. Please let me know in the comments if you feel that I did the numbers wrong because I wanna be as honest as possible. Now, let me give you my final thoughts about the Model Y performance. The looks, the design language of Tesla's is very love it or hate it. I liked it, I didn't love it, very bland and all Tesla's look pretty much the same. So I'll say the looks are boring and if you consider the fact that I live in San Diego where there's thousands of Tesla's around, 
the looks get old very quick. I believe that there is other attractive EVs out there, even within the price range of the Tesla Model Y Performance. The interior, I loved it, it never got old. Yes, it's plain, stark, but I really liked it, especially in white, very simple, ergonomical, straightforward, and the massive glass roof offers breathtaking views of the skies above you. Visibility is great, the sitting position is awesome, the seats are very comfortable, and the cargo area is very generous. It was practical and fun to drive despite the fact that it's so automated. With single speed motors, you don't get the sensations of a traditional automatic transmission. Then the autopilot does most of the driving for you, which on long trips makes a huge difference as you can relax, just play music, and enjoy the road. We have the Model Y with the performance package and remember that you no longer can get the option of the super base model with the single motor which was rear wheel drive. So the performance package which is rated at 455 horsepower and 487 pounds pseudo torque is very fast. It's supposed to do 0 to 60 in about 3.5 seconds. In retrospect, I'll say that the regular long range should be plenty fast for most of you at a lesser price. And remember that it will give you a few more miles worth the range at 330 versus 303. Yes, it's not as quick but you can do 0 to 16 in under 5 seconds, which is very impressive. I was never able to get close to the 303 miles of range claimed by Tesla, even when I really tried to baby the go pedal on long drives. And this is the lowest that I ever ran my car. I arrived to the supercharger with 10 miles, and it's all my fault because last night I had 186 miles worth of range, and I had to drive in the morning. At 5 in the morning, I had to get on the road to be at my sister's house, so I just didn't want to go and drive yesterday to the supercharger and that's one of the drawbacks of not having a home charger is that it's, it's just not practical for me because of my lifestyle i drive so much i put so many miles in this car i've done it all and i just cannot get used to having to take time to go charge the car to avoid a scenario like this this is the absolute lowest i ever run my battery to and basically i had to just interrupt whatever i was doing and drive to the nearest supercharger to avoid battery damage I could count it about 250, 260 miles, but please let me know in the comments if you're able to get more out of that 75 kilowatt battery. Um, let's talk about service center experience. It's really bad. They perform work to which I hadn't agreed. I don't want to bore you with it, so I'm going to leave that for a future video. Just know that I was very disappointed. I had been to the service center before and the experience was bad. And this one time, they just knocked it out of the park with that. They performed work that I didn't approve, and then I had to forward it to my insurance, and luckily they paid for it. But I was very disappointed with how disorganized the service center is. Let's go back to range and charging. Well, going on road trips on your Model Y was amazing because of how comfortable, roomy, convenient, and practical it is. The constant stops to recharge got old, especially in the second year of ownership, the last nine months, because of how many long road trips we made. We will let the route planner figure out our stopping for us, and sometimes he will make me stop too many times for short charges when I felt that I could have made it to the next charger. But I guess that's the most efficient way to charge it. We only had FSD monthly subscription off and on for about five months, and in total we paid over a thousand dollars, which wasn't bad compared to buying the FSD outright for ten thousand dollars or twelve thousand dollars nowadays. Here you have to think if it's worth buying the package based on the average length you hold on to a car. In my case, about two to three years. So it would have been a financial mistake to buy the expensive option. I had no issues with the car at all. The software upgrades are constant and most do improve the ownership experience. Others are just annoying and redundant. In my opinion, they take me a while to learn and then they change it again. But to be honest with you, I was impressed with how reliable the Model Y was, especially when you consider that everything in the car is integrated with high tech. Um, I might have had a couple of issues with the software, but nothing major. The touchscreen is fast, snappy, and quick to navigate through the sub menus. Overall, we loved our Model Y performance. It proved versatile and fun to drive, even if most of the driving is done by the car itself. Um, and the shorter range, short for our needs, I mean. If you made it this far into the video, then you deserve to hear the extended version of our main reason to part ways with our Model Y. As I said, we don't have a home charger. When we first bought the car, I got multiple quotes from vendors to have one installed. We live in a condo with an underground assigned parking and I would have to pay an electrician to do it for us because it requires to run a line from the electrical room to our parking spots. I got quoted about $2,500 to $3,000 for the job and I had decided to do it, but then the free charging started kicking in uh, from the referral program that Tesla no longer has. 
and I just never followed through with the home charger installation. The an artifact that most of our driving is on weekend getaways and that's where we started realizing that an EV for us in 2023 is not the right car or maybe we're not the right people for an EV. Maybe it's a case of it's not you, it's me. But at the end of the day, we decided to let go of the Model Y. It was kind of an spontaneous, unanimous decision that started brewing when I had to put my old BMW in the shop for over a month and I had to buy a car for the meanwhile while my E30 was getting fixed. Then weeks ago, we had a day trip at a family function in Palm Springs and my wife suggested that we drove the Acura instead of the Tesla because she didn't want to waste time charging the Model Y before during, during, and after a trip because she had to work the next day very early. And she did, and she loved the Acura, which I was supposed to just get rid of as soon as my E30 was ready. And she told me she'd be happy driving the Acura if it meant that we had more money to travel and remodel our home. So the second reason was financial. Our payment was 875, and it was 1075 when we had FSD. And we can do a lot of things with that money. Again, especially if the Model Y wasn't the right car for us. And lastly, the timing. We were coming up on a registration renewal, which would have been over $700. And the tires were getting there. I mean, they probably had about 5,000 miles left on them. And they cost about $2,000 to replace. And I just saw no point in doing those things, like the renewal and changing the tires on a car that we weren't keeping for much longer. And this is pure speculation. I think that in the next few months, we will see used cars depreciate at a rapid pace, and I just didn't want to be part of it. I'll leave you a link to an interesting video that I saw regarding the topic. All right, so the used car bubble has finally popped. And I hope that I'm wrong, but we'll see about this. So there you have it, the reasons why we sold our Model Y. What's next for us car-wise? I do not know. I hope I can fight the new car bug for a long time, and when the time comes, We'll probably opt for a small crossover maybe, possibly a hybrid, but definitely not an EV, at least not for now. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.